Hi, and welcome to class. My name is Mrs. Papineau, and I teach first grade at BF Day Elementary. Go Sun Dragons! Today in Making Meaning, we are going to be covering a lesson on wondering. Wondering is an important strategy to make meaning as we read. We can wonder before, during, and after any book we read on our own, together, or while we listen. Before we get started on today's lesson, I'd love for you to take a look at my What Good Readers Do chart so we can review our great comprehension strategies that we already have. I've got it right here. So, so far this year, we have learned that good readers make connections to their lives. That means I think about how my life can connect to the story I just heard. I also know that I can make connections between stories, so I can think about how one story relates to another one. I also know that it helps to retell stories in my own words. That means when I'm done reading or listening to a story, I should be able to retell what happened. Also, we know that if we visualize or make a mind movie in our minds while we read, it helps us to better understand the story. And today, we are going to be talking about wondering. Wondering just means you have questions. You want to know more. Wondering before we read, during we read, and after we read can help us answer important questions about the text. So today to get started, I want to introduce you to a special friend I brought all the way from my classroom. This here is another first grader, Friend Fox. And he is going to be my partner in learning today. Now, just like the last few lessons you've probably watched, you have lots of choices for a turn and talk partner. You can have someone at home in your family, a friend, that might be living with you, a pet, or you can pick a stuffy just like I did. And remember, you can always pick up your phone and call me. So how do we go about this whole wondering thing? Well, I have a couple of phrases to help you get started. So if you are wondering before you read, during reading or after reading, you might say something like this. Thanks, friend Fox. You might say, I wonder if, I wonder what, or I wonder who. Those are some ways that you might use your words to wonder. Remember, wondering is asking questions when you want to know something more. So today I'm so excited to share with you this amazing story. First, we're gonna take a look at the cover together. This story is called Pet Show. And it even has an exclamation mark, Pet Show. It is written by Ezra Jack Keats. It's also illustrated by Ezra Jack Keats. And when I look inside this book, at the title page, I see the title Pet Show Here's the inside cover. And I also find out that this story pet show was dedicated to someone. It says, for Susan Hirschman, and we're lucky enough that this book was published by Puffin Books. Pet Show by Ezra Jack Keats. Now, before we get started, I'm already, already going to ask you to practice wondering. Remember, when you wonder, you might say something like, I wonder what, or I wonder if. So let's take a look at the cover. What do you wonder? Hmm. I'm looking at the sign. Pet show. Looks like behind it says, free prizes. Saturday, 11 o'clock. Do you see what I see? Let's see. I see two boys, I see, oh, maybe even three, I see a dog, and he's going, hmm, hmm, 
almost looks like he's wondering. You have your wondering? All right, turn to your partner and share something you wonder from looking at this cover. What do you wonder about Pet Show? I'm gonna ask Fend Fox. Hold on. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have the same wondering Friend Fox had. Let's let's uncover the poster and see. Okay. Okay. Ha! Huh. I wonder if you had any of the same wonderings we had. Let's see. I wonder if they are going to a pet show. Thumbs up if you had that wondering. Mm -hmm. Let's read the next one. I wonder where the pet show will be. Hmm. Me too. And finally, I wonder what types of pets will be at the show. Thumbs up if you had that wondering. I bet you had even more that I haven't put up there yet. That's the great thing about wonderings. They go on and on. Let's see if we can start reading the story and answer some of these questions for ourselves. Pet show. Everyone was talking about the pet show. The kids told each other about the pets they would bring. Matt said he would bring ants. I'm gonna bring my mouse, bragged Roberto. Roberto is bragging. Bragging means kind of feeling really good and proud about yourself. So I'm gonna read that again. It says, I'm gonna bring my mouse, bragged Roberto. What are you gonna bring, Archie, the cat? Uh-huh, said Archie. The next day, they all got ready for the pet show. Where's the cat? Archie called. Anyone see the cat? Archie and Willie looked in the cat's favorite hangouts, while Peter and Susie searched up and down the street. No cat. Archie's mother came to the window. Where can that cat be? He asked her. You know how independent he is, Archie. Independent. He likes to do things all by himself, all on his own. You know how independent he is, Archie. You never know when to expect him. Hmm. What do you know about the pet show so far? you take a moment and turn to your partner or give me a call and tell me what you know about the story. Ha! Huh. I heard one kindergartner say the kids are getting pretty excited about bringing their own pets to the pet show. I heard another first grader a little worried that Archie can't find the cat. Hmm of looking so far. But I expect him now. It's time for the pet show. Maybe he's inside somewhere. Archie ran into the building. After a while, he came to the window. I can't find him. I looked all over the place. You'd better start without me. Gee, we're sorry, Archie, said Peter. So long said Susie. Hmm. Look at, look at how Archie's looking through that window. I bet you're doing some great wondering. Let's pause and wonder. What are you wondering about this story? 
remember, try to talk to your real life partner, your stuffy, your pet, or give me a call. And remember, you can say, I wonder, or I wonder if. Let me check in with friend Fox, see what he wonders. Hi, friend Fox. Well, what do you wonder about this story? Should we show all of the learners our chart? Okay, let's take a look. Maybe some of these are your wonderings too. We heard one first grader wonder if Archie would find the cat. Thumbs up if you had that wondering. Mm -hmm. We had another student wonder where the cat is. Where is he anyways? And finally, we had another student wonder what Archie will do if he can't find the cat. Wow. Hmm, that would be a tricky predicament, wouldn't it? Would he still go to the show or not? Friend Fox, should we keep reading to find out? Okay, let's do that. Hold on to those wonderings. Let's see if we'll find out the answer. They got to the entrance. A lot of people were already there. Just then, Roberto's mouse took off. Willie chased the mouse. Roberto chased Willie. Peter chased Roberto. Susie chased Peter. And the show started. Line up with your pets, please, the judges called. They walked up and down, looking carefully at every pet and asking, how old is your pet? And what's your pet's name? Everyone got a prize for something. There was the noisiest parrot, the handsomest frog, that means the best looking, the handsomest frog, the friendliest fishes, the yellowest canary, the busiest ants, the brightest goldfish, that means smart, the brightest goldfish, the longest dog, the fastest mouse, the softest puppy, the slowest turtle, and many more. As the last prize was being awarded, someone shouted, look! Here comes Archie. Hello, you're just in time, a judge said. What's in that bag? My pet. May I see it, please? At that moment, the cat showed up. The other judge called out a blue ribbon to the nice lady for the cat with the longest whiskers. Blue ribbon, first prize. Blue ribbon to the nice lady for the cat with the longest whiskers. Hmm, is there anything surprising to you that's happened so far in this story, Pet Show? Give me a call. Oh. Someone surprised that this lady won for the cat. That is pretty surprising. Oh, someone else said they're a little surprised that Archie showed up at the show. Yeah. What are you wondering? We are gonna stop here today, readers. But tomorrow, we're gonna finish this story. And I want you to keep wondering about what will happen next. Now, in this story today, not only did we practice wondering, but you heard a lot of interesting new words that helped us hear the story and understand what was happening. One of those words was the word independent. Try saying it with me now. Independent. Independent, remember, means you can do it all on your own. 
I'm going to show you a picture right now of an example of someone just like you being independent. The girl in this picture is washing the dishes all by herself. She is being independent. Now, a lot of times when we're learning new words, it's helpful to learn their opposite because it helps us remember the meaning of the word even more. We call these opposites antonyms. Try saying that with me, antonym. So the opposite of independent is dependent. And dependent means you need someone's help to do something. So here's an example of someone who is dependent on someone else. This is a picture of a kid learning how to swim. This kid can't quite swim on their own yet, so they are dependent on the teacher to help them float in the water. Let's try it again. This girl is independent, and this swimmer is dependent. Now, I bet you can think of lots of ways and times that you are independent at home. Let's think of some ways together. You might say, I am independent when? I'll give you an example. I am independent when I brush my teeth all by myself and I don't need any help. What is something that you do that you can do all by yourself? Oh, I heard one of my first graders say, I am independent when I zip my coat. Yes, you are. You can do it all by yourself. I bet someone else has another example. I am independent when I make my breakfast. Tell me more. Oh, when you pour your cereal in milk? You mean you don't need any help? That's pretty independent. Now, I want you to think about the opposite, the antonym. When is a time when you are dependent? Remember, that means you need someone's help to do something. Hmm. I am dependent when Hmm, this is a trickier one. I bet you can think of some good ideas. Hmm. Oh, I know one. I am dependent when I go rock climbing because I have to have someone help hold the ropes when I'm going up the steep rock face. Good thing I'm dependent. That would scare me to be a little independent. I wonder if any of my first graders or kindergartners have a good example. I heard another example. I am dependent when I ride my bike. And this caller told me they're dependent because they have training wheels on their bicycle and it helps them be able to ride with a little help. I bet that person pretty soon will be independent and be able to ride all without those training wheels. Any other examples out there? Oh, one of my first graders told me, I am dependent when I use the oven. That's a good thing to have to be dependent on, a grown-up to help you with that hot oven. Yeah, sometimes it's okay, and a lot of times it's good to be dependent and need help with things because it helps us be safe. So, great job practicing today's words. Independent and dependent. See if you can use them during your day. Now, before I let you go today, I know you're about to go off and do your own independent reading. If you don't have any books at home, remember, that's okay. At the end of this video, there are lots of ways to find Just Right Books online on the Seattle Public Schools website. But for now, I'd like to show you something really great you can do today after you've done your independent reading. So remember, I'm looking for a book that's just right for me. I know most of the words and I understand what's happening in the story.
So the book I chose for my independent reading time today is Lola at the Library. Now you probably remember seeing a cover similar to this last week. There are lots of fun books about Lola. Today, after you do your independent reading, one way to check if you've understood what you've read is to fill out this worksheet that is in the supplemental learning materials found on the website. So when you're done reading, you can retell by drawing and writing what happens in the beginning, middle, and end of the story. So I'm going to show you a little bit about what that might look like now. Remember, this story is called Lola at the Library, and it starts off like this. Lola loves Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, Lola and her mommy go to the library. The library opens at 9 o'clock, but Lola is ready to go long before that. She puts all the books she borrowed last week in her backpack. Her library card is also very important. The library is not very far away, so Lola and her mommy always walk there. Lola and her mommy give back the books from last week. The librarian buzzes them through the machine. There is a special section in the library just for children. It is really cool. Nobody ever says, shh. So I'm going to go back and just model a little bit for you how I might tell the beginning of this story. Now remember, the story starts with Lola being so excited because today is Tuesday. And Tuesday is library day. And she does lots of stuff to get ready to go. So. I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to write the title of the book. Lola at the library. I'm going to think what happened at the beginning. I'm going to draw a sunshine because it's morning and it's sunny out. And I'm going to draw Lola, and she's happy because it's Tuesday, and it's library day. And then I'm going to write, Lola is excited because it's Tuesday, period, she gets to go to the library. And there you have it. So to finish this, all you'd have to do is finish the book and go back and retell the middle and the end. Well, readers, it's been so fun to learn with you today a little bit about wondering as we read a story. I can't wait to see you tomorrow when we learn a little bit more and when we get to finish this great story. Please know that we all miss you so much, but we're so proud of you and so happy and glad that you're learning from home. See you soon.